Today we're speaking with Charles Belay with the Plaquemines Parish District Attorney's Office. Charles, how are you? I'm wonderful today. Thanks for uh, calling and including me in this process. Oh, no, thank you. Y'all do an amazing job. So we're just thrilled to have you as part of this, um, this collaboration. And being that it's National Crime Victims Week, um, and today actually is the uh, Wear Denim Day, I'm proud of you for wearing your denim in your blue. Um, we're trying to highlight the sexual um, assault awareness and prevention. So why don't we talk to you guys about that topic? It's such an important topic, and, and y'all do an amazing work there. So I'll, I'll open up to you. Well, thanks for asking, and we do. We take this topic in this area of law very, very seriously. This office has done really good work for many, many years, and I'm going to tie it into actually domestic violence since it's linked to that somewhat. A little yeah. sexual assault, a little bit different, but uh, since we're a small parish, Blackmas Parish, about 23,000 people, a number of people in this office wear multiple hats and do different, you know, do some of the same jobs, let me say. So sexual assault and domestic violence go hand in hand, as I mentioned. And so we've done so, a program we have was created uh, years ago, uh, a no drop policy, people come in uh, on cases and we, uh, and of course the, the uh, you typically the husband, the other person comes in once we dropped immediately and we don't till we get counseling or we get the case you know, underway some kind of. So anyway, we've always taken it very, very seriously. In fact, this is one of the few areas where pre-arrest, we're very involved in cases. Typically, most criminal work that district attorney offices do, the law enforcement, the sheriff's office people, the police departments, arrest people for crimes, the paperwork gets processed, and the DA's office gets it typically a week, two weeks or so later, and reviews and determines what charge is appropriate to file and such. In domestic violence and in sexual assault cases, those kind, we're involved typically from the very, very instance, the very beginning. And many times they want to do so to make sure that it's an appropriate case charge. And usually counseling is needed very early on, and we like doing that. We have a lot of resources at our disposal to get help for the victim. And we also have, of course, various places for uh, uh, typically for the mother with the children to go to to get uh, shelter, to get help. And so we have to be involved, and we are early on. Uh, our sheriff's office uh, is, uh, I think, now trained and knows what to do in these as well. And so we, we get involved in these from the very beginning now, unlike many other criminal cases where it's typically later that the prosecution is involved in. I think the part, you know, here is that, that, um, that hold ha the hand-holding through that entire um, time is so important. And it's amazing that you guys have that system, you know, from, from start to finish. How long is a typical length of time that you're having to work with a victim in those um, situations? Well, to work with them, of course, it's from when we first hear about, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. through the disposition of the case. And so it really varies a lot, uh, uh, you know, on these kind of things. On sexual assault, let me just say, uh, domestic violence is somewhat different in a sense, because domestic violence, I mean, it sometimes gets resolved by forcing, requiring the other party to get counseling and do things that might be a one-time incident, first time, perhaps counseling might help and might solve the problem. Lots of times it does. Sexual assault is usually, it's very different in a sense that typically by the time we hear about it, law enforcement hears about it, it's usually been going on for a while, especially with young children. And so it's not something that disposes very quickly at all. It takes time to develop the case. Many times what we really need to develop like this is what else has this perpetrator done to that person or to others out there so that we can boost, help that particular victim out to know that there are other people that are going to testify as well at the trial, at the proceedings. So it gives them a little bit more uh, confidence uh, and that it's not just them. And you're able to convince them a little bit easier with that like this, that they are not at fault for anything. It's the defendant, it's the perpetrator that's at fault for what happened. That's a big step, of course, in all sex abuse type cases, and that we're able to do. Uh, we have a dedicated staff. Uh, we believe in training for, at conferences, various things for them to go to, and it, it works quite well uh, in, in doing so. And, and I've been practicing long enough, prosecuting, I should say, long enough, that years ago, this, this wasn't actually the way, it, it didn't happen this way. 30 years ago, let's say. Uh, domestic violence is something, and, and the sexual assault stuff really developed basically in the 80s and 90s. 
and, uh, and, and it's really developed more in this century now. And so it's really been a big thing. We wear in denim, we know, because of the, it was a case out of Europe, uh, of course, where a person wearing uh, clothes that might not be considered uh, fashionable or, or appropriate in some way that they wanted to throw out, of course, a rape conviction. And there was a giant protest with that. I think it was with the Italian uh, legislative body or one of their groups. And, of course, to show that anybody who's a victim deserves, uh, of course, a lot of attention, respect, and everything that we need to do, irregardless of clothing, such as denim, of race, color, monies, or anything else. It doesn't matter. They're a victim, and we treat them as such, and we take care of it. Well, uh, that's wonderful to understand the, the importance today of the, you know, the, the theme of wearing denim. And, um, you know, I just want to say how much developing that hope, that trust, which your people do, um, is so important. And um, I'd like to close, I mean, what, what message of hope would you like to offer people during this COVID time? Because I know everybody's just, you know, we're all concerned that people um, are being very stressed. And so some of those instances of domestic violence or even assault could escalate. So the importance of your message of hope, I think, really would hit home. Well, I think, I think the message of hope is that uh, we're here to protect them, to help them. We understand, and our people are trained and involved in it, we understand uh, the, their predicament, their situation. Uh, it's not a usual situation for somebody, let's say their home was burglarized, and they're a victim, and they're traumatized, yes. But it's quite different when it's to the person as opposed to your property. And, and so they need to know that we understand all of that and we hear for them for the whole process. When we go to court, where our victim assistance coordinator is there with them. When we have to fly them in from another state, perhaps they might have run to, that we have a hotel, we have whatever we need to do to put them up to take care of them like this. We want to go through the whole process and we want them to know that we need all such victims to come forward. That's the only way we're going to stop this cycle. This, this system like this of, of, of that area is it has to, the, the perpetrators who eventually become, of course, the defendants, they have to learn, of course, that it's not tolerated. They're not going to get away with it. They've been able to get away with it for decades and centuries, but it's stopping. And it's mainly because our victims are getting strength and courage through offices like this and many others that they know like this, they can get help and they can be protected and we can do a lot for them today that didn't exist a long time ago, but now they know that we do. And so we really want to help them out and we want to stop this cycle of violence that really occurs. Well, that's it's so important. And um, you're absolutely right. Speaking up breaks the cycle of victimization. And that's a Crime Stoppers message that they can speak up through us anonymously. It's certainly law enforcement in your message. And I truly hope what we see, the shining example of what's coming out of the, all of this pandemic, is that people are bonding together and we're our brother's keeper. So I want to thank you again for everything you're doing. It's so, so important. And just continue the charge. We, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Darlene, for everything that you do. But of course, these phones go off sometimes, huh? Yeah, yeah I know you're busy. So. <laughs> thank, thank you and your program, everything you're doing. Getting the message out is very, very important. You're doing this. It is, is really a good thing to be done today. And perhaps even more so right now when everybody's home paying attention to things such as this, it's really great. So we thank you very much for doing so. Well, we sure hope everybody's watching and I hope they go change into denim if they don't have it. So you have a blessed day. <laughs> thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.